All right, fight fans, it's time for our co-feature. One of the big ones you've been waiting for. Let's welcome our next combatant to the cage. Ladies and gentlemen, Tim Dooling. All right, here comes Tim Dooling from Trenton, New Jersey. Maybe a few fans of Dooling in the building tonight. He's making a, not a slow walk, but rather a light jog to the cage tonight as he prepares to take on probably one of the tougher bouts of his career. But Tim Dooling is no stranger to tough fights. He's fought some of the best in the world. The record may not look like much on paper, but he has some big wins over CES alum Kenny Foster and Dan Dubuque who fought earlier tonight. So we know he likes to mix it up with some of the best. He's fought Ring of Combat vet Bill Algio and also trains with Dante Rivera, Dante Rivera BJJ. Rivera, of course, an ultimate fighter, contender, and veteran a few years back. So he's got some great training out there in Trenton, New Jersey. We asked uh, Timothy about this fight coming in. He said, listen, whenever a challenge presents itself, I'm more than willing to step up to the plate. He has no reservation whatsoever about taking this fight when Patrick Sullivan called him to step in there against the hometown favorite, knowing what he was about to step into. There was no hesitation on his part. He's ready to step up to the plate and take on what may be one of the toughest tasks of his career. A very impressive resume of opponents that he's faced, which I think can sometimes carry a fighter, Tom, in a fight like this. If you've been up against the best, you know what to expect coming into a fight like this. Well, that sets right up there with any of the competition that Tim Doolin's faced so far. So, Bissett, no stranger himself to tough guys. And his opponent coming to the cage, Matt Bissett. There it is, the crowd goes wild. Matt Bissett, born in Hartford, fighting out of Stafford Springs. 31 pro fights under his belt. Seven time CES MMA veteran, three time UFC vet, nine time Bellator vet. He's fought everywhere. He's fought for almost all the major promotions. Six in one lifetime with CES, so very comfortable in this cage, very comfortable with this promotion. And he brings not only the experience factor, he brings the home crowd with him. They are just excited to see him make that walk to the cage. Bissett kind of building up momentum as he gets that crowd behind him ready to go. We know Bissett's story well. Battled leukemia for almost eight years as a youth when he was three years old up until he was cancer free at 11. He's been a fighter his entire life. And at times, Matt, uh, Tom rather, he considered retirement. He wasn't sure if he was going to get the call, but he stayed with it. He finally got the call to the UFC 220 in Boston. Had a short stint. Thought about maybe going to PFL where we talked about the offer of the big money prizes, but decided at the end of the day he wanted to come home back here to see us. Is this is this Eddie Brock or is it oh <laughs> wait no it's, it's Matt Bassett. There he is. The homecoming here in Hartford for Matt Bassett. We talked about the pressure that a fighter can face, Tom, when he has that home crowd behind him. You definitely want to come out and perform. How do you maintain that balance of just sticking to the game plan but putting on a show because you are here to entertain? He's been through this before. He's been through a lot worse in his day than showing up and fighting in front of your home crowd. Uh, you know, he did say it's, it's going to be a little sentimental here. He is kind of carrying the show as the, the hometown guy here, the first show in Connecticut, sanctioned by the commission. So, the set returning to the city where knockout eight by submission. Both fighters coming in five foot ten, no height advantage whatsoever on either side. Dueling a nice crisp seven and four. Three of his wins by knockout, two also by submission. Fighting out of Trenton, New Jersey. Let's set it up to Adam Palacio for the official introduction. Dressler's lore about of the evening. Serious injuries, dedicated lawyers with offices in three Connecticut locations. That's Dressler's lore. The following fight is scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the red and black trunks. He weighed in at 145 pounds. His pro record, seven wins, four losses, with three victories by knockout and another two by submission. Hailing from Trenton, New Jersey, ladies and gentlemen, Tim the Jaguar Dooley. And his 
his opponent. Fight out of the red corner, wearing the pink trunks. He weighed in at 146 pounds. His pro record, 22 wins, nine losses, with seven big victories by knockout and another eight by submission. He is a UFC alum and is the pride of both Stafford Springs and Hartford, Connecticut. Ladies and gentlemen, Matt the Mangler Bassett. Your referee is Brian Miner. Gentlemen, we're over the rules in the back. Fight hard, but keep it clean. You want to touch gloves? Do it now. Good luck to you both. Adam Palacio bringing the heat on that introduction. That's what this fight is worth. Let me tell you what, this one's going to be a war. Matt Bissett coming back to Hartford, fighting in his home state for the first time, taking on Timothy Dooling. We are cage side at the Hartford Convention Center. Michael Parenti joined by filthy Tom Lawler and Paige Monroe. This one is going to live up to the hype, I think. And I think the records don't mean anything when you get in that cage, Tom. Those doors lock. Dooling's been in with some of the best in the world. So has Bissett. This could be a back and forth. Entertaining, just as we saw in that last fight. The set with a nice combination to open things up. Now trying to go upstairs. The set, if you count the fight he had for the Dana White Tuesday Night Contender Series, actually had three fights at UFC. That one ended in a knockout loss with Bissett actually injured his hand. The fight later overturned to a no contest when Holobar failed the drug test afterward. So it did not count against his record and then got the call to UFC 20, 220 rather in Boston as a last minute replacement. At the time, Tom, actually 24 hours before he got that call had announced that he was going to retire from the sport. So the plans changed in a hurry and here he is three fights later still at it and now breaking ground in Connecticut as CES brings you the first sanctioned show in the Nutmeg State. And it's been an exciting one here. We'll see what the plan is here as he faces Timothy Dooling. Both guys throwing a lot of feints. Nothing real heavy landed so far. Oh, he said catches that leg kick at that, that side kick attack. This is, oh, oh, he's able to land a spinning back, back fist. Dooling's head right. kick of his own. Dooling popped up pretty quickly. I was surprised. I thought he may be out, and Bissett may have been able to just pound his way to a, uh, to a finish, but Dooling pops right back up. A lot of times that kick misses. You think you're out of danger. Bissett read it, came back with a spinning back fist. Dropped Dooling, but hey, Dooling's ready for it. He's tough. He's been in there with some of the best. He's taking shots. Certainly no stranger. Takes a front leg kick, shakes it off. Dooling tried to work that jab, followed by the right hand. Stalking his prey like a jaguar would. Sounds moving shots. Dooling leaps in with a nice short elbow. Uh, Dooling's hair right tie hand. is out. <laughs> stuck, stuck on his body there. The set initiates the clinch. Dooling with a body shot. And, oh, there the hair tie went. Back to the center. Slips trying to land upstairs. Two nineteen to go in round number one. Set reaching out there trying to gauge the distance. Dueling leaps in with a lead uppercut. Almost finds the mark. That's the, the second time. Bissett was able to land a punch there over the top. Uh, he was able to catch the kick earlier. Dooling had just stepped in with a low kick there when Bissett took the punch. So perhaps he's, he's cued in on the timing of that leg kick. Bissett executing those overhand rights, but Dooling's done a nice job covering up, absorbing most of the blow. Yeah, those are all coming at seemingly the same oh, angle. That one landed. That one 
one step through. Nice short uppercut with the right. He looks a little wobbly. Down he goes. The set now on top. And here come the elbows. He'll be a little more wobbly after some of the short elbows on top. 1.15 to go. Plenty of time for the set. Set settling into half guard on top here. Dooling trying to work back to the full guard. Set not having it. The set's really caught him with two nice shots. First that spinning back fist, then followed by that right hand that sent him. Yep. Well, now he's, he's wobbled him. Yeah. Set up a head and arm triangle here as he's got his head underneath that shoulder. He's peppering him with shots. Dueling able to push him back and defend a little bit there. Bissette's corner on him there for giving him time. Yeah. Giving Dueling time to recover. Dueling landed a nice short elbow. Yeah, a little grazing Bottom. elbow on the way over. Now Bissette with another elbow. It looks like Dueling's busted up pretty bad on the right side. I think below the eye. He's got a little cut on this left side. Left side there, like right on the temple. Yeah. He's controlling the wrist. Needs to be setting up a triangle attempt, possibly. Final 15 seconds, solid first round so far for Matt Bissett. Gonna cut under that right arm too. Goes for the this hip bump sweep there. Gonna land a nice short left uppercut out of the clinch. This round seems to come to an end. Yep, that was a long five seconds for sure. I thought that one oh, was Bissette over. going back to the wrong corner. Wrong corner for Bissett. <laughs> now that happens sometimes, what can you do? But a good first round nonetheless. He landed that early spinning back fist that sent Dueling down, but Dueling popped up quickly. There was two knockdowns in that round. That's right. Or the second one may have been a, a shot right after. But I believe the second one wobbled him. Here is the first one. You see the this lazy kick. fist. There's that oh. spinning back fist. Dueling went down, got up quickly, and able to avoid more damage from that point. Yeah, kind of a flash knockdown there. The set appeared to sustain a cut, Tom. There's, there's that other right hand right to the chin. Yeah, there's the one that got him. That just kind of wobbled him and set the stage for Bissette to more or less just push him down there. Yeah, he landed a nice short uppercut as well as Dooling tried to step in for the shot. But little ground and pound, but not fans, enough. Sure. Bissette did sustain a brief cut that the ringside physician checked out just for a second. Nothing, nothing too damaging. The fight will obviously continue. We get ready for round number two of a schedule of three rounds here in the featherweight division. Matt Bissette in the pink trunks, Tim Dooling in the red. Set now, Egan on the crowd. Said that's one. That's one. Let's go, baby. All it takes is one shot. So that's true. Dueling didn't want to touch gloves there on that one. Nice uppercut to start off by the set. Rear uppercut. Tried to work that jab throughout oh. the fight. I think that kick snuck over the top. Yeah, that's how I mean, he he ate part of the shin and then an overhand right to follow. Nice combination by Bissett. First 40 seconds here of the second round. Side kick. Again, that overhand right just grazing the top of Doolin's head. Not quite in the sweet spot. Yes. Doolin just kind of jumped into that right hook, right cross. Beat her right in the sternum. That'll certainly slow you down. 350 to go in round number two. Set again, just letting his hands go. Very comfortable in the stand-up, as always been throughout his career. And a nice short jab by Doolin to counter. And tries to land that overhand right. Yeah, Doolin dunking his head though. I think the set might be wise to it. Or another uppercut. It seems like kind of be off balance every time he steps in. Too heavy on that front foot. Oh, a little slip by Bissett, but he luckily for him stayed out of the way of any damage. Yeah, it makes some that hair tie that's just sitting in the middle of the cage there. Tries to go for that rear uppercut again. been throwing that that overhand right. We haven't seen any straight right hands from the set. No. For all this looping punch, which served him well. I mean, he caught Dueling early on with it. Not really looking to establish the jab. Just going to go in there oh. with that right. Just ducked right under the punch of Dueling. 
Gets Perfect timing. Down. Brilliant. Two and a half to go in round number two. He's looking to set this hook. Drags Doolin back, although... Doolin taking the bottom position here, but not really doing much. He doesn't have much of a defensive uh, guard here. And now Bissett in side control. I think he stepped over the left arm. And if so, this could be a real trouble, real problem for Timothy Dueling as Bissett possibly could go for a crucifix here. Yep, he's got that left arm blocked with the shin. Uh, but Dueling's able to step over. Bissett takes wrist control with the left arm. He has the left arm trapped. Dueling there for a second. I mean, Bissett's going to be putting up two fingers after this round if it stays this way. Yeah, Bissett just wearing him down now in the second round. Again, good stand-up, and he gets him to the canvas and just smothering him here over these last 30, 35 seconds or so. Dueling really no answer for this. Yeah, not looking to pass, just going to stay on top and land some ground and pound and control the round. Dueling trying to sit up. The longer he stays down on that elbow, the harder it's going to be to generate any offense. If he can get up to that hand and start using his hips, maybe he can look to sneak back for this guillotine. One minute to go in the second round. Bissett looking to take a commanding lead going into the final if it gets that far. They say timeless there on the back of Bissett's trunks. Time's running out for Tim Dooling on bottom here in the second round. Oh, I agree. He's got to mount some kind of offense here to turn this round around. But it doesn't appear there's going to be enough time for him to do that. 36 on the clock. Bissett in complete control. Dueling very competitive, but again, Bissett just controlling the base. Fighting in the exact fight that he wants to fight, not letting Dueling come in here and try to fight his own fight. That's been a big key for Matt Bissett here in his Hartford homecoming. Who wouldn't want to fight this fight when I mean, you're on top? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> not getting hit. It's a nice position to be in if you can maintain it. In a short time, it looks like Bissett's going to maintain this position until the round ends. Now it lets decides. him up for a second, yeah. Dueling trying a little somersault kick there just to close it out, but nothing avails. Bissett gives him a little pat on the rear end for his effort. That's two rounds in the books for Matt Bissett, who's looked crisp, who's looked sharp in his homecoming. Tom, if you're Timothy Dueling, what's the strategy here in round three? You know you need to finish or a stoppage. I think you try to keep it on the feet. I mean, we've seen every time it hits the ground, it's a losing proposition for Dueling so far. Bissett's been able to get on top. He's been able to control it. Uh, and speaking of that, let's hear what Dueling's corner has to say. Double the jab, I'm pumped out of it, you've got to turn the pace up. Really get in the clinch, control the clock ahead, go to short up, okay? You heard him? Well, I think anyway, if we didn't hear it, they would probably echo your same advice to keep it standing up. I think there's a chance at least to land a glancing blow or land one on the chin and he can finish the fight and stop it. We've seen it before. We've seen fighters. We've seen Eric Spicely in the last fight who we thought was about to be down on the scorecard by a round, land a short right hand and knock his opponent out. So there's always that opportunity. I think it's harder against a fighter who's established a firm pace to try to get him on the ground and get a submission. I think at this point, dueling just has to let his hands go in this third and final round, and we'll see what his strategy is. So here it is, the third and final round of this co-main event. Matt Bissett in the pink trunks taking on Timothy Dueling in the red and black. Dueling going upstairs with the kick. Throwing out that left high kick. Michael Parenti, Filthy Tom Lawler, and Paige Monroe cage side at CES 55, brought to you by Modelo, live on UFC Fight Pass. Little short jab there by Dueling. Steps in with a big rear uppercut. We saw Bissett use very well earlier on. Oh, oh, Shot the red cage there by Dueling. Straight to the body. And then it goes right back to it with the kick. Tries to come over the top with the punch. Just misses. Yeah. 
seems anyway for the first minute that Dueling has the game plan that we both spoke about. Stay on your feet. The problem is he only has one round to make this game plan work. I mean, he's down two rounds to none. I've got to imagine. Nice jab. I mean, Matt Bissett's not the judge, but I think he won that first round. I think he won, won round number two as well. Dueling with a nice left. Goes back to the body with the kick. The set more than likely, knowing where he is in the scorecards, you wonder, Tom, if he gets into a situation where Dueling is starting to get the better of the exchanges, does Bissett go for the takedown and try to ride it out? Is there a danger in perhaps doing that, even if you're effective on the ground? I mean, you have to fight, but here's the problem. The set's done virtually nothing in that first minute of the round. Now he gets taken down here. We'll see uh, if Dueling can do anything. You know, perhaps Bissett was just too complacent. Yeah, possible uh, interesting turn of events here. You're right. Maybe Bissett comfortable with the lead, not trying to engage as much, gets caught off guard a bit. Sometimes that can yep. lull you to sleep, and Dueling gets the takedown. And now Dueling has a little opportunity here for the final three minutes, yeah. if he can make something happen. And he's pushing the pace. There's a sense of urgency on a Tim Dueling here, and that's exactly what there should be as we go into the third round. But set now, he wants to fire back. The set now recognizes that Dueling obviously coming in here to get the finish in this last round and has to be on his toes. Only two and a half to go, but set with that uppercut again. Ducks out of the way to jab nicely. I mean, even if you're winning the war, you can't just lose battles on purpose, you know? It's too, too great of a risk, too many casualties. That was a good clean right to the chin there by Doolin. That could have been a troublemaker if Bissett had really stepped into it. Doolin going back to the body here. Bissett fires back with a high kick. Oh, nice overhand right, right, right there. Now Bissett opening up a bit. Now here goes Bissett upstairs with a kick. Doolin egging him on, asking for more. Licking his lips. <laughs> and he landed his... Lands some shots right afterwards. Spin. Avoids those, but not, be, not able to capitalize. There's Most that somersault kick again, or whatever you might call it. You may have a different name for it. Cartwheel. 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 Somersault's forward. Front, front okay, split. that's the yeah. cartwheel, folks. 1.40 to go in the third and final round. Uh, Dueling at least having fun in there, but has to do something dramatic here in this final minute and a half if he's going to escape with the win and spoil the party. Shook out that left hand, not sure if it's hurt, if he's just getting himself ready for this final 90 seconds. Big leg kick by Bissett. Dueling just ate it, fired back. Set with the high kick, blocked. Everlance of punches on the end of it, bloodies up Dueling's nose now. Yeah, Bissett now finishing strong when he has this fight, at least seemingly in the bag. Bissett talking to him. Bissett now having fun, getting the crowd on its feet. Anticipating these final 40 seconds, Dueling a bloody mess as you mentioned. I think after that takedown, it might have been a little bit of a wake-up call, Tom, for Bissett in this final round to not get complacent. And now here he comes up again on his feet, unloading rights and lefts. We're going to the finishing stretch here. Can Dueling pull something out of his hat? Set still not afraid to mix it up, even in these closing seconds. What a fight. And an excellent homecoming here for Matt Bissett at the Connecticut Convention Center. What a fight. I'll tell you, this one was as good as advertised. Dueling, we knew his resume. We knew what he had been up against in the past coming in. And Dueling showed what he's made of and why a fighter like him has been on the big stage and fought some of the best names in the business. This guy's a great opponent and a great fighter to test yourself against. And Dueling really gave Bissett a test tonight. Bissett just fired up tonight after performing in front of his home crowd. Again, CES MMA 55, the first sanctioned professional mixed martial arts event in the state of Connecticut. And of course, you can't do it without Mr. Connecticut himself, Matt Bissett. We'll see what the scorecards say. Could be 29-28, could look close in the end, or maybe 30-27 across the board. Not sure how the judges will go, but it looks like a definitive victory for Matt Bissett, who really, Tom, controlled the pace over those first two rounds. Yeah, I, I would think this is gonna be a, if not 30-27, Maybe even a 30-26. You know, he got two, essentially two knockdowns there in the first round. Looked fantastic on his feet. And 
looked fantastic on the ground as well in the second round when he got on top. A little bit of a hiccup there in the third as Dueling kind of uh, pushed the pace and lulled him into a false sense of security before shooting the takedown and taking over, but Bissette fired back and made it to the end of the fight. Looking and good. And Dueling certainly knew what he was up against going into that third round and knew he had to come out stronger, so you certainly expect him to be a little bit more aggressive coming out. And I think you're right. I think Bissett may have gotten the wake-up call from that takedown early in the third and said, okay, I can't be complacent here. I got to keep fighting. I got to finish the fight strong because you never know what happens. You can get caught if you're complacent. You've seen it countless times, whether it's boxing or mixed martial arts, sometimes lulled into that false sense of security can be deadly for you, but not tonight for Matt Bissett. And let's be honest, Tom, coming off that two-fight losing streak with UFC, not sure about his future. This was a fight he needed. Yeah, Bissett's looking to get back to that next level. And this is the first step on that on that journey, on that path. Let's send it up to Adam Palacio for the official announcement. Fight fans, after three rounds, we go to the scorecards. Judge English and Senadad scored the fight 30 to 27. Judge Peabody scored the fight 29 28 for your winner by unanimous decision. Matt the Mango Bissett! Matt Bissett, what an incredible fight. Come on. What's up? Oh dear. I thought it was gonna be a bad idea. Yeah, this is gonna be a bad idea. I can take my heels off, but, That's right. okay. You're so much taller than you with the heels on, eh? Incredible fight. Absolutely well done. Let us know, how did you, how'd you prepare this fight against Tim Dooley? You know what, Tim is a really well-rounded fighter. Um, you know, and, but he's one of those guys that just likes to stand and go at it. And I was like, as soon as I saw this one, I'm like, on paper, this is easily, easily fight of the night. And this man has tremendous balls and, uh, I could not ask for a tougher opponent coming into Hartford for our first for our first fight here. Thank you so much, Tim. We are here in Hartford, Connecticut. This is where you were born, this is where you fight, and now this is where you win. What would you like to tell your family, your friends, and all your fans? Uh, I don't, you guys don't get it, how much this means to me. This really does mean a lot. I know you guys are spending, you know, 40 bucks, 50 bucks on a ticket, but to me it's priceless. And I love everybody that comes out for me. I love my son. Thank you for being here. I love my wife. She's due at the end of May. I love everybody, man. Pat Sullivan, Jimmy J, everybody, man. I, thank you guys so much. CESMMA is the shit. That's it. Give it up for him. Woo! An emotional post-fight speech 